to start with simple songs, eh? And that's the first things I heard on the guitar. Um, like all the bros jamming and all the parties of the other families I would hang out with was all just guitar and singing, man, and everyone having fun and not being afraid to sing, not being afraid to just play and let yourself be relaxed, man. I really loved that. I liked that feeling. And then my grandfather introduced me to the instrument that helped them get that feeling. And I was like, man, wicked. So, yeah, that was all over. And then at 11, that was it. I think I knew what I wanted to do. I just want to play that guitar for the rest of my life. got bombarded we got bombarded with all kinds of music hey but i used to sleep to the radio so that was every kind of filling my head full of music um the 80s were rolling around so then all the all that fat 808 kick drums and all the beats coming in all the run dmc came in so that was a, it was over we've got to have some beastie boys we're gonna have some of this some of that and some of this and you go and you grab it you know and it's public enemy and but at the same time we're listening to I was listening to these blank tapes sent up from Wellington and when my cousin would come up from Wellington because you're in the country, eh? So you don't really know. Like, we know what's going on. But, like, come on, we're in the country, bro. We don't know what neo- neoclassical is and we don't know what fucking... There's all these really cool terms. Oh, yeah, that's, like, acid jazz and that's fucking something else. Yeah, we don't, we don't know. It's just, it's just music, right? So you're almost luckier to be in the country... You're almost luckier to be away from everything and be given something and you can get a fresh idea of what it is than to be put in the middle of something huge and bombarded constantly with different labels and different ideas of what it is and being told what it is. Yeah, that's the other thing about we weren't raised and we weren't told. So we just, <laughs> we are free as. We got all this music going to us, you know dubbed onto tapes we we can't even, we didn't even know what they were called found out later that one of them was miles davis doing a heap of standards so i learned all these miles davis standards at 12 but i didn't actually know who it was or what it was so that type of thing was happening all the time you know so yeah and music was just music still because it's on a blank tape you don't know what it's called you don't know where it's from and these guys have got attitudes or he's an ex dude or that fellow there is wicked oh, I don't know their names man you're just listening to the music which was really really cool went from that and then you know confidence is still there like the fire is still burning from 11 and then came up to um like 14 15 we're already entering competitions with bands i had my brother on bass and this drummer and we went out like a three-piece and because you know i'm falling back on safety and my safety was Jimi hendrix and my safety was uh stevie ray and my safety was bob marley and my safety was peter tosh and my my safety was these you know, like staunch people that can handle themselves with just three people on the stage, you know. So I liked that. I kept that, trying to get that fire. So we attacked Hamilton. We, we get out of our little town, we go to the next big town, which is, wow, big. 50,000 or something. I don't know. What else have we got? Probably that. 
50,000 people or something, you know? There ain't no party unless each and every one of you try to make it a party. You dig what I'm saying? going you know and with a bit of confidence in that and i started playing around and stuff like that um, i had to do the inevitable and join a like a pub band to make some money you know and you go and play songs for that people like to hear or say that they like to hear when they're drunk and so you play for them so i got to see a lot of people drunk for a long time well heaps heaps of years eh? close to 10 years of drunk people which didn't help actually my understanding of people to start off with because it wasn't actually a good understanding from the word go. So there was still something on music that I couldn't put my finger on that, you know, I needed control of this thing and this fire and all this stuff. And there was something I couldn't put my finger on. So I got given uh, some contracts and stuff and they were like, yeah, well, we'd like to record and we want to get our stuff together to record our thing and do our originals thing and put on a contract and distribute and stuff. But even the thought of me being under a contract didn't compute with my brain because it means you actually have to do what you're told. And there's a group of people, not just one person, but a group of people telling you what to do about your music and how you should do it and where you should go with it, how much you're going to sell it for, what you're worth. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, none of that really computed in my brain. So I just had a wall up against it. I don't want to get signed. Ian, you know, shove it up your ass. I don't want to be signed to anybody because I know what you're going to do with me, you know. I know what you want from me, and that's basically all it came down to. So I said, well, I can either stick around with this feeling here and just get more and more confused, even though the bands were great and I was playing some great bands, and the originals bands we had were awesome and now I look back at it at some of the stuff we did and damn it's better than some stuff that's out now but the point of it is I just couldn't I couldn't compute it in my brain that I might have to be told what to do with my music so I took off overseas because I just that's it I'm going to go see what other people are doing over the rest of the world you know not that we're trapped here or anything but you just got to get out so I got out <laughs> 